being a lawyer was one of the forms of struggle in my day. I started practice in 1995. The environment was difficult at the bar. Uh, the bar was almost 90% uh, or more white. So we had to fight a lot of struggles for black practitioners to be seen as people who can practice law. Not only in South Africa, but all over the world, there was this belief that law is not for black people and women. So a role of a lawyer in South Africa is being part of creating a new society that our constitution promises. We represent a lot of communities who are facing eviction, but many of them are poor. Many of them, despite having a voice, have had that voice ignored. Many of them are always sort of told that they deserve the least. In fact, when Seri was born, the idea was to, to provide first-class legal representation to the poor in the same way that the big five law firms do for the rich and corporates in this country. It's been important for us to make sure that one, our clients feel respected, but to they get the best possible service. Public interest lawyers are responsible in many circumstances for developing new constitutional rights, new constitutional arguments. They are primarily responsible for bringing claims on behalf of poor and vulnerable people, the people who need the protection of the Constitution the most. Public interest lawyers uh, tend to have very, very limited resources available. We have to make every uh, person, every lawyer in our office the most effective that they can possibly be uh, in order to uh, displace some of the natural advantages that commercial law firms and commercial clients uh, who we will often be facing in court uh, have. So back in London a student barrister will spend up to nine months in the classroom practicing courtroom skills, by which I mean learning how to take a witness through their testimony, or to cross-examine an opponent's witness, or to make a submission to a judge. In South Africa, when I came out here, I was pretty surprised to find that the attorneys here receive little or no courtroom skills training and can involve representing hundreds of vulnerable people. When we devised the training, we decided to try and bring the nine months syllabus from London to South Africa and condense it into four days. One of the things we were very clear about was that this would be completely free to these young lawyers. This is my fourth year. I find this training astonishingly well organized, well done. It is necessary and it's the only training available to um, lawyers that do the human rights angle, especially the ones in the NGO world. They don't earn a lot, they wouldn't be able to afford it. And in that sense, I think it's an absolute uh, godsend for them. I think the instructors are great. I think they're relatable. After the first session that we have, the group session, it, it really made me comfortable with the training. I'm able to ask questions and learn more than I anticipated. We run a course that teaches them basic skills at the beginning and drives it through to full trials at the end. We move forward to providing the delegates with uh, case studies, trial papers, which are dealing with areas of law that are current in uh, the South African context. This is really great because it's skills development and it's skills development very early in your career. I came in very nervous. Stuart Al, he was a supportive coach and he's very motivating. Be a bit stricter with yourself about what's relevant and what's not relevant. I'm really, really uh, grateful for the opportunity to participate. Grateful for the people who've come in to train us. Uh, 
those expertise that they have. That we also aspire to be some of them, uh, to teach, to practice. It really feels as though a difference is being made in a short period of time. For me, the most satisfying part is seeing somebody's confidence grow, because you know that that confidence is going to continue and improve every time they go to court. What um, I like about this training most is that it was a combination of South African trainers and trainers from the UK. So we were able to give perspectives. And after all, we are the same jurisdiction, uh, part of the Commonwealth countries. I think it's a tremendous inspiration for these young people to be in a room and doing a full hearing in front of judges and practitioners such as Anna-Marie De Vos. I think the application was brought uh, properly and one should come to court properly prepared for anything. And uh, Gina Melindi. You may proceed. Thank you, Your But they rise to the occasion. I came in very unsure of myself, uh, very doubtful of my skills and what I know. I've certainly gained some confidence because I feel skilled. I feel like I've grown a lot. I feel like I will know more and have more knowledge than maybe somebody who's in a commercial law firm somewhere uh, who didn't have the privilege of attending this kind of advocacy program. I always look at them and, and see the real nervous ones and then I can't wait at the end of the week at the trial to see how well they perform how they've pulled themselves up and how, how quickly they learn. And then afterwards, perhaps a year later, it happened twice or three times now, see them in court and you cannot believe the difference. Well, the, the section that we are uh, applying to have uh, struck out is uh, section two of your the Intimidation Act. Of, of yeah. just with all due respect, your worship. I know that a lot of the confidence they have and the, the methods that they use, they've learned here. It absolutely works. Here the bar was very high. We've been stretched to our limits. Just to show gratitude to whoever's funding it, the organization I work for would have never been able to pay for me to attend such a course. It's an NGO, we rely on donor funding. Thanks a lot, like we really appreciate it. Ready? One, two, three. We see that we have a lot of young black lawyers who our communities can identify with, who help them not only in understanding that they deserve better, but they get to see themselves in the lawyers that represent them. This enriches the quality of work that is provided. I come back from um, a place that was previously an informal settlement in South Africa. I always wanted to be an advocate for my people, especially because you don't see a lot of black female lawyers. So I wanted to be that beacon of hope for my community. I see myself as an advocate for change. You sort of forget just how important the work is that you're doing and how important this skill is and how you're going to go out and use it. South African law is evolving every day, in effect. The advice I can give young lawyers today is that the path that they are about to embark on is very important, not only for their own professional advancement, uh, but law has proved in South Africa to be an agent of change. So they'll be agents of change.